Suna Baba, protectors of the Suna. Suna Baba, protectors of the Suna. In Alhamdulillah, wassalam ala wa rasulullah. Welcome to another session of our new series entitled To Be Loved by Allah. And this is the series in which we speak about the things that we can do in this world that will bring us close to Allah to the point where he will love us. And why is it so important to earn the love of Allah? Well, there's one reason why. That is because Allah has promised us that he will never, ever, ever allow the hellfire to touch anyone whom he loves. So that's the thing. We're all going to have our day of meeting with Allah. We will all as Muslims have to stand before Allah and be judged for the choices we made in this world. Many of us will be standing before a law sweating. But you want to get that word from a law saying, despite the fact that you did this incorrectly, or despite the fact that you did that incorrectly, or despite the fact that you made a bad choice on this date, the simple fact that you believed in me, the simple fact that you loved the prophet Muhammad, the simple fact that you would, were willing to give your life for me has caused me to decide to forgive you of all your sins because I love you. That's what we all want to be our outcome, our ending on that day. So that's why it's important what to learn what it is that we can do in this world that will cause Allah to love us to the point where he forgives us of all the bad choices that we made. And so this is the third uh, lecture of this series. And let me, uh, this is based on the book, as I've told you guys, this is based on the book compiled by Sheikh Muhammad Saeed Atli. And he's taken these wonderful, wonderful, wonderful hadiths from out of the uh, uh, Sahih Muslim and Bukhari and these wonderful, wonderful, wonderful verses of the Quran in which Allah details to us what to do and how to earn his love. And we spoke about how it all begins with number one, having the perfect and correct belief system. That's why we need to focus on our relationship with Allah. We wanna make sure that we're not living our lives innovating and deviating away from the true Islam. We talked about how each day of our life should be spent as if it were our last on this earth. And we wanna spend, feel the day doing the deeds that are pleasing to Allah. And we talked about, you know, how, you know, these things will bring about love from Allah. And today we're going to speak about more things that we can do, such as performing the prayer within its fixed time. The last time we met, we talked about how in order to earn the love of Allah, you have to fulfill your obligations to him. Well, he loves for us to perform the prayers within the fixed times and also to be dutiful to our parents, to struggle in his way. So we're gonna speak about other things that we as Muslims can do that will bring about love from our Lord. And we're gonna start with the prayer at its prescribed time. And we just completed our uh, class on the prayer. And we talked about how each prayer has its own fixed time. Whenever the Adhan for Dur is called, you have until Asr to pray Dur. And then you have until Maghrib to pray Asr. And then you have until Isha 
to pray Magre, and you have until Fajr to pray Isha. So praying those prayers within that fixed time, this is how we earn Allah's love. And that's why it's wrong for a person to say, you know, that if I didn't jump up immediately and pray when that Adhan was called, I'm going to hell. Because that's not what Allah said. We have to first of all ponder this reality. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was asked by Ibn Masood. He said, O Prophet of Allah, what deed is the most beloved deed to Allah? And the Prophet said, praying on time. And this is where the Muslims get twisted. They think praying on time means as soon as that adhan is called, I have to jump up and pray. But that's not what the prophet meant. What he meant was to pray it within its time frame. Listen to what Allah says in the interpretation of the meaning, establish the prayer from the declining of the sun to the darkness of the night. Here Allah is telling you, when the sun declines, that's the time from, for my grip. And you have until the darkness of the night to pray it. That's a time frame. That's praying on time. So anytime I make my grip but from the declining of the sun until the darkness of the night, this is praying on time. Okay, and also Allah says in the interpretation of the meaning, hold fast to the recitation of the Quran at dawn, because the recitation of the Quran is witnessed by the angels then. So again, this is why uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would delay. He would oftentimes delay. I repeat, he would oftentimes delay the Isha prayer until the last third of the night so he could recite the Quran, you know, during that time because the angels are there to witness it. And again, Allah says in the interpretation of the meaning and those who strictly guard their five daily prayers at their fixed stated times. So again, what is a fixed stated time? A fixed stated time is within the frame that Allah has given us. You guys see that? You see that? Salati him. Nuhafitun. Y'all see that? So the fixed stated times, as I explained to you guys early, is, you know, from one prayer to the next, until the beginning of the next. Does everybody understand? All right. That's how you earn Allah's love. Also, not only do you earn Allah's love by praying each prayer within its time frame, but also you can earn Allah's love just from being dutiful or merciful to your parents. And we spoke about this in a previous class too. You know, in that hadith that I just mentioned, after the prophet told Ibn Masood that the deed most loved by Allah is to pray the prayer within its time frame. The uh, Ibn Masood said, well, what deed does Allah love the most after that? And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said the deed that Allah loves the most after praying each prayer within its fixed time is to be good and dutiful to your parents. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam made us aware that being dutiful to your parents and fulfilling their rights is a deed that Allah truly does love. Listen to what Allah says in the interpretation of the meaning. Your Lord has decreed, do not worship anything but him and to be good to your parents and should both or any one of them reach old age, 
Do not say to them even oof, nor chide them, but instead speak to them with respect. And also Allah says in the interpretation, the meaning, be humble and tender with your parents and say, oh Allah, show mercy to them as they nurtured me when I was small. You know, this is one of the signs of the last hour. You know, our children, the children will grow up and disrespect the parents. The children will become masters over their parents. We see this happening today all the time. Well, it's one of the signs that the end is not far because after performing your prayers, Allah specifies the importance of taking care of and honoring and respecting your parents. It's hard to deal with them when they get old because when we become old, we kind of forget things. When we become old, we become set in our ways. When we become old, we don't like to be corrected. So for a child to still show patience with them, and show mercy to them, this is how you earn Allah's love. So a lot of people may ask Sister Layla, uh, how, what does it mean to be dutiful to your parents? Being dutiful includes respecting them, honoring them, treating them kindly, caring for them. In fact, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, may a person be disgraced, may a person be disgraced, may a person be disgraced whose parents, one or both of them reach old age and he is not dutiful to them. Such a person will not enter paradise. Many of our children and grandchildren need to ponder these words. You disrespect your parents. You dishonor them. You're harsh with them. You yell at us. You scream at us. We ask you to come and help us do something and you tell us, no, we have to pay you. Or even worse than that, you are too busy for us. Well, people like this, guys, that's why I tell you guys, be patient. Because if your children are like that, that's what's going to prevent them from entering paradise. It's going to come back and bite them. And we don't think about paradise now, but you'll be thinking about it when you're in that grave. And for those people in the grave who are not kind to their parents and their grandparents, they're going to wish they could come back and do it over. But there are no second chances once the angel of death pulls your soul from your throat. So again, you want to earn the love of Allah. Respect your parents. Also, another way to earn the love of Allah is struggling for his sake. I'm always asking you guys as a teacher and as a diet, what sacrifices have you made for Allah? This is something that I'm constantly uh, badgering myself about. I constantly ask myself, Layla, what sacrifices have you made today for your Lord? What sacrifices are you willing to make for him today? Allah loves those who struggle and sacrifice for him. You want to be guaranteed paradise? Ask yourself, are you one who struggles in his way? In the same hadith that we mentioned earlier, after the prophet explained that Allah loves for us to pray during the prescribed times and to be dutiful to the parents, the prophet said after being dutiful to the parents, the next most beloved thing you can do that will earn the love of Allah is to strive against his enemies. And when we talk about striving against the enemies of Islam, we're not just talking about fighting on a battlefield, striving against your own desires. Who is the greatest? The greatest enemy against anyone is your own personal gem. 
your own personal gen, he's the biggest threat to you. To strive against him, to fight against him, to try to keep those bad thoughts that he suggests to you from, uh, from going into your heart. That's a great struggle for those of us who succeed in overpowering our gen. We are people who have succeeded in overpowering the enemies of Islam. Listen to what Allah says in the interpretation of the meaning. Surely Allah has purchased of the believers their lives and their belongings. And in return, he has promised that they will have paradise. They fight in the way of Allah and are slain and, and they slay. Such is the promise he has made incumbent upon himself. So again, guys, you know, we're not fighting in a battle on the battlefield, but we're constantly engaged from the time we wake up until the time we go back to sleep. We're constantly engaged in battle against our personal gin. Have you slayed him lately? Or has he succeeded in slaying you? If you're still smoking those cigarettes, you're still drinking that alcohol. You're still lying. You're still cheating. You're still being belligerent with others. You're still disrespecting your parents. Then he has slain you. But when you overcome that nonsense, that's how you slay him. And in turn, this brings you closer to a law to the point where he will love you. So I tell you, and I ask you again, what sacrifices have you made for a law lately? What have you done for me lately? What have you done for a law lately? Remember when Allah says that our homes are better than us, a lot of Muslims need to take advantage of that because when you stay in your home, not only are you protecting yourself from the harm of others, but you are also protecting others from your harm. Some of us need to make the sacrifice of staying in your home instead of going out bothering other people. Some of us need to make the sacrifice of turning off the television. Some of us need to make the sacrifice of closing up social media, disconnecting the internet, because we're ca causing more harm on the internet, you know, talking about Islam, when we're not qualified, then we are any good. So again, all of this, whenever we struggle against ourselves, we're struggling against our personal gen. And your personal gen is an enemy to Islam. Your personal gen is an alia of shaitan. So you want to earn the love of Allah. Overcome yourself. Everything begins at home. Just like the prophet said, charity begins at home. Dawa begins at home. Everything begins with you. SubhanAllah. And another means of earning the love of Allah is through prostrating to him. How many of us who are able to, how many of us prostrate to Allah? One of the companions who was a freed slave of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said uh, that he asked uh, uh, another companion, tell me of an act that if I do it, it can cause me to be admitted into paradise. The man remained quiet for a while. And then he said, well, prostrate. Because I heard the prophet say that there is no one who prostrates once to Allah, that Allah will not raise up one status from it and erase one sin from it. 
So here you can see, guys, you know, whenever we prostrate, it seems like something menial to do. But look at the reward it can bring. Not only are you forgiven of a sin each time you prostrate, but it makes you closer to a law. Why? Because prostration, this is one of the most humblest forms of worship that we can take before a law. When a person prostrates, this entails placing your forehead and your nose on the ground. And there is no other position of humility that, that, that outweighs it. When you go into this position, like you see here in this picture, this is total submissiveness. And that's why the prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said that when a person prostrates, he is in the closest position he could possibly be to his Lord. So whenever you prostrate, make as much dua or make as much supplication as you can, because this is a position of humility. And that's why, guys, in Islam, we are forbidden to prostrate before a human being or prostrate before a, a rock or anything other than Allah. This is one of the highest acts of worship. To prostrate before anything other than Allah makes you a person of disbelief. Even Allah commands us. He says in the interpretation of the meaning, prostrate yourself and become close to your Lord. Y'all see that? So again, you want to earn the love of Allah. Hit the floor, as they say. Take a knee, as they say. But that knee is going to be to a law, not to anyone else. Doing this and asking a law to help you, doing this, asking a law for guidance, doing this, asking a law to forgive you, will bring about his love. And that brings us to another thing that we can do that will cause us to earn the love of Allah. And that is to talk about him, to mention him frequently. One thing about this website, why do I keep this Zoom room open? For many reasons. Number one, we support each other here. We help each other here. And yes, when you join our Zoom room, sometimes we argue. That's part of being human. Sometimes we fight especially a bunch of women, that's normal. But one thing, we all love each other here. And we're constantly reminding each other of a law here. When Brother Hatham joined, that even puts more flavor here. You know, we're constantly reminding each other of what our purpose is in life. We're constantly encouraging each other to hold on to the rope of Islam, okay? Remembering Allah, the more you remember Allah, the less likely you are to fall victim to your personal gene. The more you remember Allah, the stronger your faith uh, develops, guys. So of course, it can't help but be one of the best ways to earn Allah's love. We have a hadith where one of the companions tells us that a desert Arab, a Bedouin, a Bedouin came to the prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he asked the prophet, uh, who was the best amongst men? And the prophet said, the best amongst men is the one who is happy and his life is long and his deeds are good. I'm always telling you sisters here in this website, sometimes I mean, a Fresno gets angry. Well, in fact, all the time she gets angry. Sometimes Anissa gets angry and sometimes Latifah gets upset. But I tell you guys all the time, you shouldn't be ashamed to admit that you're old. I'm old too. I don't have no problem admitting that I'm 60 years old. 
because old age is a blessing from a law. It's something that you women should be proud of. I don't understand why Amina Fresno gets upset when I say she's 100 years old. You should be proud of that because this hadith here, the prophet is telling us, you know, the man asked, you know, who is the best? The prophet is saying the best of men, the best of women is the woman or the man who has a long life and good deeds to show for it. Subhana Allah, you're 80 years old, Anissa, and you got 80 years worth of good deeds to show for that. You're 67 or 65 years old, Latifah, and you got 65 years of good deeds to show for it. Because remember, when you convert to Islam, guys, or when you come back to Islam, your good deeds that you did when you were not in Islam, they come forward too. So whatever bad you did, during those years that you were not Muslim, the good deeds come forward. So Allah has blessed you to be 80. Allah has blessed you to be 65. Allah has blessed me to be 60. Alhamdulillah, we still here. We still kicking. We still living. We're still beautiful in deeds and we're beautiful in looks. That's a sign that Allah is happy with you. Your appearance, your personal appearance, your outer appearance only counts when you old, guys. You want to know if you led a good life. If you 60 years old and look like me, you six, uh, 65 and look like Latifah, you 80 and look like Anissa, that's a sign of goodness. Be, that's a sign that you got a lot of good deeds because Allah could have made me look old and ugly. He could have made Anissa look like a hag. He could have, that's a sign that our deeds are, our bad deeds are outweighing the good. How many of you knew that? That's a hadith. To be Sheikh Morsi's age, to be Dr. Assam's age, to be Dr. Dramali, me and Dr. Dramali are the same age. Look how beautiful we are in appearance. That's a sign that we got a lot of good deeds. That's a sign that this dawa is paying off. Dr. Dramali had one, he had two feet in the grave. He almost died of seven years ago. Look how handsome he is how young he is. He's got a lot of good deeds and Allah has put it on his face to show him. That's why I try to tell the things I teach you sisters in this website. I know a lot of you hate me. A lot of you don't like me. A lot of you think I'm mean, I'm evil. But one thing about me, I'm teaching y'all real Islam in your language, English, that you ain't going to get from nobody else because the people and knowledge are hard to find. A lot of people ask, how do I know if Allah is happy with me? Look at your outer appearance and your age. You are 60 years old and my God, you look like you 20. That means you got a lot of good deeds going forward, sister. Because look at that sister over there. She's the same age as you and she looks like a hag. That's a sign that she doing something she ain't got to, that she ain't got no business doing. Maybe she ain't making her prayers. Maybe she's smoking that pipe. But we the same age. Your appearance. When the prophet died, he was in his 60s. He didn't even have a gray hair, Harley. Very handsome. You know, all the prophets, they were old, but they were beautiful men. They're wives, beautiful women, old but beautiful. So your outer appearance, when does my outer appearance matter? Your outer appearance does not matter to Allah, but it matters to you when you old sisters. So why are you women 
ashamed to say that you 80. Look at me. My good deeds, the light of the, the, the believer's face. When Allah is talking about the light, like I said, you would never understand the Quran, brothers and sisters, until you learn them hadiths like Layla did. Hello. When Allah speaks about the light on the face of the believer, the light is the good deeds. You guys didn't know that? You women here at Zoom didn't know that? Because y'all get ticked off at me about age. Stop being American and be Muslim. The light are your good deeds. Just like the hadith we read about the light of the prayer. That's your good deeds. So if you 80 years old and you women look beautiful, that's a sign that you got some good deeds in your favor. So your outer appearance matters to you when you're old. When I look in the mirror and I see my face start raveling up, when I look in the mirror and see that I'm looking like my coworkers my age look, that's when I know I got some problems. That's when I would be hitting that flow like, uh-oh, what did I do wrong, Allah? Because I'm seeing my bad deeds on my face. The people who disobey Allah, Allah says in the Quran, their faces turn black. Do y'all know what the black is? The black are they bad deeds. You know, how do I know this? Because I know the Hadith. I know the Sunnah. Every verse in that Quran was sent down for a reason. And the prophet explained the face. He told the companions, the face is the, is, is the most elegant part of the body. Not because of beauty, he said, because beauty lies in the eye of the beholder. What's beautiful to you may not be beautiful to me, but what makes the face the part of the body that's the most special part for us is, it's a sign of your deeds. If your face has the light, the youthfulness, that's a sign that you got a lot of good deeds in your favor. He said, but if your face is withdrawn and haggard, that's a sign that you have a lot of bad deeds in your favor. This is an authentic hadith. So when you women in this Zoom room get mad at me because I'm telling you your age, you better fear a lot because everything I tell you, I joke with the truth like the prophet did. Everything I tell y'all is right on. It's a hadith in some way or some form, but oftentimes you women don't get it because it's the nature of a woman to be spiteful, jealous, envious, and wanna fight with each other and challenge each other. Y'all need to chill that in the Zoom room. Seriously, you older women, Need to chill that crap in my Zoom room. Okay. All right. So again, guys, you know, uh, uh, happy. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the best woman, the best men are those who are happy and they have a long life. That means they old and their deeds are good because their deeds will reflect on their face. That's the rest of this hadith. The good deeds keep the light of Islam on their face and they're youthful in appearance. The ba bad deeds darken their face and they're old and haggard in appearance. That's the entire hadith. And also this Bedouin, he asked the prophet, what's the most excellent deed anyone can do? And the prophet said the most excellent deed that anyone can do is to not leave this world without mentioning the name of Allah on your tongue. In other words, to die with Allah on your tongue. I'm sure all of you have heard how uh, the prophet said there's so many rewards and uh, anyone that dies saying la ilaha illallah, instant paradise. Well, there's a lot of Muslim doctors and nurses that will tell you, and my daughter is a nurse. They will tell you that the hardest thing to get a Muslim to say at death is la ilaha illallah. 
It's hard. Unless you are a person who really lived your life doing good. Most people are so caught up in the pains of death. They can't make their tongue say anything. Most of them are, uh, 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 uh. my daughter said, they'll be like, uh, uh. they can't get it out. Only a few can say, la ilaha illallah. I remember my surgeon, Dr. Siddiqui, told me that. He said, Sister Layla, you know, I had a lot of Muslims, you know, that died on the operating table and most of them survived. But the ones that died, he said, do you know it's not easy? It's not easy to give Shahada at death. Many of them looked at me and he said, and they can't get it out. He said, and these were people he knew that didn't pray because they used to come to him and talk about how they don't pray and stuff. Then he said, only a few. He said, Layla, I've only had three. He told me he's only had three Muslims in his whole career as a surgeon who were able to say, la ilaha illallah at death. So it's not an easy thing to get another Muslim to do. Because again, death tells it all. Okay. But for the person that can leave this world with the law's name on his tongue, not only is that the sign of a good ending, but it's a sign that that person earned the love of Allah, guys. Does everyone understand that? So you want to earn Allah's love. Then we need to focus most of our time on remembering him. A lot of you Muslims, we talked about this yesterday, are into that social media. A lot of Muslims waste their time on chat rooms and on chat platforms, Clubhouse, Facebook, uh, YouTube, a chat program here, here a chat, there a chat, everywhere chat, chat. You know, instead of wasting your time on arguing, debating, or talking about the politics and the science of things, spend your tongue remembering Allah, remembering Allah. Go read the Quran. Go to take some classes, some online uh, Islamic classes so you can learn about Islam. And also make your heart remember Allah. And how do we make our heart remember Allah? Well, by pondering the names of Allah. Instead of wasting your time on those chat platforms talking about relationships, why don't you make yourself Take the names of Allah and his attributes and break them down and ponder their meaning. Open up the Quran instead of singing it. Ponder what you're reading and study the proofs of Allah's laws. Study the proofs of his prohibitions. Instead of just singing the Quran to try to get a man or get a woman, Reflect on the secrets of Allah's creations. This is how we remember Allah. The tongue remembers Allah by reciting those words and phrases that are uh, um, that He loves. The body remembers Allah by performing the acts of obedience and worship that He loves. And the heart remembers Allah by pondering what Allah loves for us to ponder, which is him, Allah. Remember, guys, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said arrogance is the cloak of Allah and pride is his garment. Our Lord is very arrogant. He loves to be praised. So instead of wasting your time in the club, you need to pick up that book, the Quran, and instead of trying to re re read with Tajweed and thinking you're going to get a man, read that with Tajweed and ponder what it is Allah is saying to you in hopes that you can earn Allah's love. His love is the only love you should be looking for. I'm always telling you guys, love don't love nobody. My granddaughter threw that back at me the other day. What you say, Ma? Love don't love nobody. That's right. The only love you need to learn to love is Allah. Have love for him. His love is what matters. If he loves you, he will cause the rest 
of his creation to love you. So remember him often, praise him, glorify him, work on strengthening your relationship with him. Listen to what Allah says and the interpretation of the meaning, oh, you who believe, remember Allah with lots of remembrance. And also Allah says, and the interpretation of the meaning, come to the remembrance of your Lord. Get off the chat program. Get out the chat clubs and go, come run to the remembrance of Allah. Listen to what the prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said. He said, shall I not tell you of the best of your actions, which are the purest to Allah, and which will raise you up high with him. And they are better for you than even given in charity. And he said that is to simply remember your Lord, subhanAllah. Some people will come into my Zoom room and say, oh, it's boring here. Oh, it's boring? Yeah, because all they do, you know, is talk about, you know, their lives and, you know, and what Allah said about this and what the prophet said about that. I like some drama. I want to go to the club. I need some drama. I like to argue. I like to debate. Well, the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said the people who Allah will hate the most on the day of judgment. In fact, he will not look at them. He will have them dragged by their faces and thrown in the hellfire are those who used to argue and debate his religion. You find it boring here? You want the drama of debate and argumentation? Knock yourself out. So again, guys, you know, remember Allah. Remember Allah to remember him as often as we can. That's how we earn his love. And also prostrate to him. When you wanna to talk to somebody because you're lonely, we talked about how a lot of Muslims are turning to social media because they're lonely. The believer is never alone because he knows he's got a law. Get on that floor, prostrate yourself, talk to your Lord. Ask Allah for what it is you need. Ask Allah for the help you need, the guidance, the support. Talk to him. Man can turn away from you, but Allah will never turn away from anyone who calls upon him out of sincerity. As he said, you come an inch towards me and I will come a fathom toward you. You walk towards me, I will run towards you. Get on that floor and prostrate and talk to him instead of talking on the club. And make sure that you guard your prayers. Make sure that you perform them during the fixed time frame that Allah has given you. And be dutiful to your parents. And we know it's hard, but respect your parents, help your parents, be dutiful to them. These are things that we can do to earn the love of Allah. And so I'm gonna stop right here for today. Next week, we're gonna speak about some more things. And as you guys can see, there's so many different things we can do to earn Allah's love. How many of us are doing even one of them? Some of you may be doing all of them. But how many can say that we are doing at least one? If you're wasting your time on the club, you're wasting your time on the Xbox, you're wasting your time playing cards, not seeing that these things are wrong, but there's a time for this and a time for that. Are you balancing your time? Are you sacrificing for Allah? Are you struggling to earn his love? All right, I'm gonna stop right here for today. Inshallah, tomorrow I'm gonna to continue with the next part of this wonderful series, To Be Loved by Allah. And for those of you who want to buy the book, in fact, I encourage you to get the book. You know, I did put the link 
to Muhammad Saeed Atley's uh, uh, website. Go there. That is the direct link. The book is only $5. Because one thing about Sheikh Muhammad Saeed Atley, he's into the dawah like I am. You know, he loves the law. And he loves the prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, just like I do. Okay? And his whole life, his whole life, his whole existence is based on sacrificing for a law, just like mine is. So this is a book that I think every Muslim should have in their library. Go to the link that's on the, uh, the Facebook page and also on the YouTube. I put the link in, on, in you, on YouTube too. If you guys go to the category uh, that, that I ha have this uh, series listed in, you will see the link to that book there too. All right. So I want to thank everybody for joining and participating. Subhana kalahuma wa bihamdika. Ashadu an la ilaha ila anta. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Okay. Any questions or comments?